also weird because for Warriors fans, when it comes to the Clay Thompson piece of it, um, it was so unpleasant this past season yeah. and the lack of um, understanding or acceptance in perhaps coming off the bench or taking less money. And it really feels like it was an ego thing. And that oh, happens. Oh, it totally is. We, we uh, see his that fi- happen. To put it in very basic children's terms, his feelings were hurt. Yes. And I try not to, like truly, because you never know what conversations have been had, what he's been told. Like, feel her feelings are a real thing. Yes. Like, sometimes we go through it and it's like, wee, someone's feelings were hurt. But like, no. That's what my wife says to me. <laughs> wee, and your feelings <laughs> yeah, were exactly hurt. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> but sometimes you can't get, sometimes things are said or actions are done that you just simply can't get over. And it feels as if that is the case for Clay Thompson, who could ultimately take less money with the Mavs or the Lakers, um, but he will not be a Golden State Warrior, and it does symbolize the end of that. Oh, sure, group. and I just, I always try to put myself in his position, and I would feel exactly the way he feels. I, I think we all know two things are true. This is Steph's dynasty, not his, mm-hmm. and Steph is still operating at an extremely high level, and he isn't, or at least not at the high level that he yes. wants, you know, occupied. So... Um, I know that, you know that, your yes. husband knows that, the Warriors know that. I bet Clay Thompson doesn't feel the, quite the same way about it. He thinks he's got something left, and he thinks that he is owed something for his accomplishments with that franchise. Yeah. Steph got paid, Draymond got paid, you paid Wiggins, but I'm where you draw the line. Yeah. Uh, that, that'll hurt you, right? Mm-hmm. Then you hear Kendrick Perkins last night on TV, and, and he goes, um, Where's where's Steph and Draymond? And, you know, then they, you know, Winhorst and those guys are like, well, you know, just because somebody's not out there tweeting and posting doesn't mean they're not doing things. And and Kenner goes straight to the thing that you can't deny, which is you telling me if Steph and Draymond were in that building and they said, hey, we can't lose this guy. Mm-hmm. It's our brother. We can't let this guy go. Yeah. You, you telling me they'd just be letting him go? And they were like, well, you know, because that's the truth. So, and if you're Clay Thompson, doesn't that hurt? Yes. And this is a Because you know, very if, they, if Steph said you can't let him go, they wouldn't be letting me go. And he knows Steph isn't fighting for him yeah. to that degree. This is not a direct correlation, but it reminds me of a story I read this weekend. Uh, Eddie Murphy did a long sit-down interview with the New York Times, mm-hmm. and I recommend checking it out but he goes back and references do you remember when David Spade made the joke about Eddie Murphy happening, but I'm aware of it okay so I ended up going down the rabbit yeah. hole and, and David Spade wrote about it in his book and bottom line is David Spade did a segment where he made fun of celebrities and at one point after one of Eddie Murphy's not as good movies right. I forget which one it was, it was exactly yes that is the one um, David Spade made a joke of like look a falling star make a wish on Eddie Murphy right. and Eddie Murphy took great offense to it so much so that he like called David Spade multiple times wouldn't let it go before before he could talk to David Spade and make it clear, like, I can't believe you would do this to me. And they weren't even friends. Like, David Spade was friends with Chris Rock, and David Spade is on SNL. But the notion that SNL, a place that, at that time, Eddie Murphy was arguably the most famous person to uh, come out of SNL during that period, would allow a joke to fly about him. He didn't go on SNL for years. Decades. Decades. And... It was because he was hurt, not by David Spade, but the fact that Lauren Michaels would allow for that joke to pass. And when I was listening to stuff about Clay Thompson this morning, I couldn't help but make some connections just from a standpoint of when the ego gets hurt, Mm -hmm. reactions happen, personal reactions happen to it. And when you don't feel like a place that you called home, that was your workplace, that was your friends, and lines can get blurred between just a workplace and a family and however you want to make it. There are some sins that cannot get gotten over for added, a long time. Added yeah. to that is, I built this. Yeah. Right? Like, the Warriors before Clay, Steph, and Draymond got there, I'm going to say all three of them, because all three of them were parts of that, were they part of that dynasty. Before they got there, they weren't this. Oh, no. Right. They, they weren't. They built a whole new arena because of what oh, those moved three to a whole new city. the Splash Brothers, not the Splash Only Child. Right. right. So, <laughs> and, and to the point about Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy saved us in that. Right. And so for both of them, it's like, hey, look at all of the things that I've done for you. This is how you're going to treat me? Oh, yeah. like both those things make sense. Eddie, we the agree Maddie, it's a great joke. The Eddie, no, it's a good <laughs> it's a joke, joke. But the Eddie Murphy thing, make, like if I were Eddie Murphy and I were watching yeah. that, that would bother me. I'd yes. be like, yo, man. Like, That's I, my home. I, I helped save that place. That thing wouldn't even, none of me. you would yeah. even be in that studio if David not for me. David Spade would not have the job to make That's the joke right. if not for me. And now, you, you're, now yeah. you're, you're having fun at my expense? That would bother me if I were Eddie Murphy. Totally makes sense. The Clay Thompson stuff, you ready for this? From the Warriors' perspective, I understand why they're ready to cut ties. I get it. I also understand why Clay Thompson is 
incredibly offended mm -hmm. by it. You're looking around, you're like, everybody else got paid. Yes. You took care of everybody. You all, I've been here decade plus. All you've talked about is right. family. All right? I had opportunities to leave. I stayed. All you've talked about is family. I drive my stupid boat to my games. All right? And when it came time, you never made me a serious offer. You took care, I watched you take care of everybody else, including the guy who, I love him, but was punching our other teammates. You took care of that guy, but not me. I'm where you draw the yeah, line. Who ended up get, getting traded for now what is they nothing paid him because too. they got Chris Paul back in that deal, and then Chris Paul walks. So ultimately, the guy you punched in the face yeah. is in Washington for free. So like if you like the, yeah. mo the easiest it just adds on, the right. easiest thing to understand among all NBA free agency stories right now for me is Clay Thompson's feelings are hurt. Yes. Because that, that makes, that is, I, I could totally relate to that. I think it's that. a very relatable. Easy to understand. No matter how you feel about Clay Thompson, you can relate to feelings like that. The Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt, live every weekday at 8 a.m.